Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Today, taking a look at Twin Lakes, um, Twin Lakes Park Redo. <laughs> I knew there was more, I couldn't remember what else, but Twin Lakes, I mean, that's as good a name as any, uh, because of course of these Twin Lakes here. Really excited to bring you this match. This is one of my favorite maps. I know I say that about every map. Uh, there's a lot of really good maps. <laughs> No, but I promise this one's really interesting. There's there's some good reasons for it. Now that we've seen all the drawings that the players have brought out for us here, um, we're going to wipe that so I can talk about the map. You can see there's these huge open areas uh, that I've marked out with an S right there for no real reason. Um, as well as down here, there's this big flat area, and both of these are going to be really, really good for vehicles, which I love to see. Uh, I think vehicle T1 vehicle play is just super, super interesting. And then you get to that T2 artillery, and things get really spicy. You've also got these plate, these uh, these these. I almost said plains and lakes. You, you, these plates here. <laughs> you know, no, you've got these lakes here, which are of course going to allow players to start with naval or seaplane or you know some interesting strategies. And so indeed, for both teams, uh, we do see sort of sort of some naval play coming out. the The tidal power is twenty on this map, so it's really really powerful. Uh, and and yeah, so actually getting those naval generators is really nice. I do I do like to see it. I wouldn't even mind seeing a couple of these handed out to their uh fellow teammates here by white chimp ghost and uh frost 16 here just because they are so absolutely tremendously efficient that you could really help your entire team by uh by getting those out and about i just realized i had this on 0.5 speed there anyway we'll turn this back up to one and let's meet our players going to be representing our teams today spawning on the western side for our blue team we have purple potion he's the purple people eater but this time it's just the purple potion Put in the pouch of the purple people eater. Uh, if you enjoy word sandwiches like that, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, lots of lots of delicious word word type delicacies for you to munch on. Twice daily here at the Brightworks. Uh, but going for a vehicle bay in the back. And uh, if this was Armada, I think I would be a little less surprised. But we're going for a Cortex one, which is a bit odd. We don't see Cortex vehicles in a backline position. So we're either thinking about using vehicles to push forward... Um, or this decision is just confusing to me, and we'll just have to keep our eyes on uh, the, the affairs back here and see what we can see. Uh, the reason that confuses me, by the way, I guess I shouldn't leave you on that cliffhanger there. The reason that confuses me is because the Armada T2 constructor, uh, or rather the Armada T2 vehicle bay, can produce the Armada combat engineer, so it's much more common to see backline vehicles for Armada, whereas the Cortex T2 uh, vehicle bay does not have a combat engineer. Um, it has the mobile anti-nuke, I suppose, so that's that's one thing. Uh, but yeah, interesting backline spot here. Oh, before we meet our red player, our yellow player, the Windows user 92. Not a Windows 92 user, it is the Windows user 92. The, the 92nd user of Windows has sent a tick across the map, officially earning the Brightworks uh, get, a, uh, get a unit out and about on the field award, um, even if the tick was brutally shot down by a grunt. But spawning on the eastern side, right up front for their team, we have Captain Fishcake, who's taking quite a lot of these mexes here. We are up to four mexes, and uh, just checking the metal, the metal portionings here. 2.4 for each of these mexes. So we're actually going to have a really nice economy, early game economy anyways. 12 metal. Uh, yeah, usually you see like 8, sometimes 10. The 12 is quite nice, and we still have two more metal extractors to go. So yeah, expansion here, nice and fast, and we're going to get right into the action I would love to see a vehicle bay here more than uh, more than on the other spot back here because I think for this player it makes a lot more sense because there's two open flat terrains that are easily accessible to you. Um, but that being said, also those res bots are mighty powerful, so I can't blame them for wanting that. Wow, Ducky XD has pushed extremely far forward here. We're gonna get a light laser turret up way, turret up way before any other commanders for the other team even get remotely close to this back line. So like a couple of ticks have actually sniped a construction vehicle here from space bound space to bound i uh i think i'm gonna call you space bound <laughs> anyway space bound uh forced to retreat the commander here to deal with these ticks but the ticks just run away and now space bound has lost the lead to ducky xd's commander who is setting up a nice little line of defense and i absolutely love that we could even see a couple of these metal extractors taken and then we are well set up to go right into that forward vehicle bay that I always love to see. Whoa, these ticks actually getting a crazy amount of value back here. We do find a bunch of constructor bots just chilling at home. And uh, they're just, they're all going down. These are some some multiple Chevron star generals from the <laughs> from the, 
the pink player, but wow, what an absolute amazing snipe right there. Really, really powerful. We are teching up to T2, uh, <laughs> T2 Navy. That is interesting. White Champ Ghost, meanwhile, is going for a seaplane strat here, which I think is probably what I was expecting. Uh, I didn't, didn't have many expectations, but that was probably one of them, I would say. This is an interesting little divot in the ground right there. I'm not sure exactly why that's there. It almost looks like it was meant to be a mountain, but it got, uh, in the in the map map leveling, it just got shrunk down instead of built up there. Um, quite interesting. We do see units coming out of our back line here. A lot of T1 solar panels as well. Um, on a map like this, 2 to 18, well, I guess it's easy to, to jump to solar panels at this point with 2 wind energy. I guess we do need it. Um, so as long as these get reclaimed, I guess I don't mind, but uh, 2 to 18 is definitely well within bounds to consider windmills. Although, what's the wind risk on this map? 8.2? Oh yeah, you should be going for wind. Absolutely. Even if it is going to screw you over <laughs> and go down to 2 for the first half of this map. I feel like uh, by this point in the match, we would already have seen quite a lot more aggression, and it probably is not that way. Simply because of the fact that the wind has been so bad, and basically every player is relying at least a little bit on wind production here. I do like how many advanced solar panels we're going for in the back line here. We are going to be short on metal for a while, but this is definitely going to be the energy needs for a good, good amount of time. And we just get some energy converters up and running. And it'll eventually mean our economy starts to outgrow our opponents. Our opponent, SS99, going up against Polar Bear King, going to be building quite a few advanced solar panels as well. And I really love to see it. We're, oh wow, we're hiding our energy converters way, way back there. I suppose that's fair. Captain Fishcake has shared thousands of metal in order to uh, get Frost-16's base up and running. I mean, we have the two T T2 lab out now. We have T2 metal extractors coming up. They're pretty good. I'm trying to get a look at this metal extractor. Yeah, there's still 2.4 under there. Uh, but at the very least, we are going to get that T2 economy in the water, of all places, up and running really nicely. Early seaplane gunship out here. The Cutlass. Fires this, uh, I believe it's called a riot cannon. Yeah, the riot cannon. Very impressive, uh, very, very impressive unit. Oh, interesting. So the yellow player here, the Windows user 92, has actually gone for stealth or, or uh, cloaked metal extractors. So this gunship doesn't see anything right here. That's that's uh, surprising. We don't usually see those brought out, but in this specific case, it actually is hiding these really nicely. Gunship is going after the uh, the geothermal plant, but it could actually just do the same amount of damage by killing the construction bot here. Oh, and it does switch targets. Really love to see that. So these, like, uh, plasma pellets are going to start raining down on this construction craft here. <laughs> We're trying to juke and jive with it, but it does not work, unfortunately. Uh, do we have any kind of aerial response? Doesn't look like there was any sort of aerial back player here. No, no air labs by that, I mean. Um, so, unfortunately for now, it just looks like anti-air bots or static defense is all we can spare here. Um, that being said, this is down to 12%, so I'm not sure how much aggression, how much more aggression we're going to be able to get. Uh, we scuff up the windmills, but we do not manage to kill them. So that, at least the very first gunship, is, uh, is shut down. Now, there are more on the back of this, so that'll be quite interesting to see. We have loads of power production. We definitely need to get some, some energy converters up and running. Get us maybe up to 16 metal per second. That'll be quite nice. Grunts and pawns holding hands and pushing together in unison. Wow, they actually decide to make it official. <laughs> they uh, they commit to being one, one with the Kala. And uh, yeah, they're actually going to, to merge into the yellow player's team here. We have an agitator out and about. And uh, this is an expensive way to deal with this, especially... Oh, there's actually another agitator over here. All right, tit for tat. Uh, but this agitator is not landing any shots on this one. I think it. I think those are both dumb firing. But this one, this one knows where it's firing, and, and uh, or rather, the, the green one knows where it's firing. The light pink one does not. We are also about to see a second agitator come up. Although its field of fire is a little blocked by this laser turret, um, not substantially though. And it can certainly rain down fire from above if it needs to. These units have pushed through on this side here. We can see riot riot uh, cannon. Cutlasses, seaplane gunships here, trying to deal their very best with this situation, but it is not going to stop the geothermal plant from going up in smoke. Now, luckily, this player does have a bot lab, so we can see some res bots if we need to. And eventually, the pink agitator does go down. The pink agitator. It's, uh, it's a pretty funny nickname. Uh, oh, I guess both of these players are pink. Was that a... Oh, it's hard to tell. I think that must have been Vitlas. Vitlas? 
VT lass. Uh, we'll call you Salmon. I think that must have been the uh, the Salmon player's agitator there that did go down. Which must be why Ducky XD is able to field such a large army when those agitators are so expensive. Uh, gunships are flying around in this direction. They do actually catch a bunch of these pawns moving through. This is exactly what they're meant to deal with, are pawns, grunts, anything like that. You can see there's a little bit of AoE on their attacks when they fire, so they can actually do a um, little bit of damage around in a circle. Let me show you that. You can see there's the, the smallest amount of, of AoE damage there, so they actually do pretty good. As opposed to the Saber, which just fires a... Uh, that is the, the Armada gunship. Uh, which just fires a little laser beam. And the laser beam is really powerful, actually, but it is... Uh, you know, it is somewhat limited in scope here. Commander getting dangerously low. Down to 1% on this commander. Oh, are we going to get it? Oh, are we going to get it? We do not get the commander. Commander reduced down to 61 health. Just 61 health. And uh, we do not manage to get it in the end here. A couple of shell shockers being annoying to this front line. The uh, grunts politely ask them to knock it off, but the stouts are here to deny them their message request. Uh, and in fact, you see a lot of vehicles being built up here. A lot of static defense lines are being drawn. And, uh, ooh, some T1 gunships are coming out here. That is quite interesting. We don't see those very often. Although I feel like I say that as a lot. <laughs> need, a, need, need, a, need a break. Need a, a drink of water real quick. Um, no, I feel like I say that a lot. But also I feel like in the last, I don't know, dozen or so casts I've seen, that I have ended up seeing these gunships here and there. Um, at least a couple times. So yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe these gunships are coming out. Maybe this is a new meta. I'm just I'm a boomer and I'm I'm behind the behind the curve here. <laughs> I'm way I'm, be, I'm behind the uh, the the meta shift to the the T1 gunship. Who knew? I just don't like them because they're very very easy to shoot down. Especially since we already saw those those uh, gunships push forward and be aggressive. We have things like this where we already have a bunch of anti air bots lined up here, and they have a tremendous range, by the way. So it's going to be really hard to get any kind of aggression. Wow, that was a really nice pick there. That I was uh, focused up here still. We do see a bunch of these thugs were able to take down a commander. The uh, the, the Salmon player's commander. Ducky XD with some beautiful D-guns wiping away these ducks. Or <laughs> rather these thugs. Uh, just, just papered them away like it was nothing. Luckily the gunships were here to mop up that problem. There are some light anti-aircraft. Or light anti-air bots I should say. And uh, it looks like it'll be enough to draw, or to uh, push back, rather, those gunships. Now, the middle of the map has been essentially uncontested by the blue team. I, uh, I cannot believe that the red team has actually not figured out that there's this glaring weakness right in the middle of the map here. If Captain Fishcake was able to push through here with just a couple of units and scout this, uh, this game is over. <laughs> Rasta... Ra <laughs> Rust abortionist, Jesus. Uh, Rust abortionist here. Our green player. How about that? Our green player going for a bit of a tech transition. I would love to see these T1 eat up and then uh, maybe the bot lab too. Just so we can fund that T2 transition a little bit easier. A lot of scrap left over on the front line here. If we switch to our handy uh, metal view mode here, we can see that there's one and a half thousand or just under uh, in this, this metal pile out, out in the, the northern plains. Uh, of course, there's also that tons of metal left in these commanders, but those are f those are quickly falling under control of the uh, pink players once more. So the, the blue team will not be able to capitalize on the death of those commanders. They will only be able to relish in having a slightly higher score for the time being. Our blue player is dangerously heavy in T1 Solar here. I think we absolutely are failing to tech up here in the, uh, the backline position. Oh, uh, we do have some advanced solar panels. Yeah, so if, if we already have the advanced solar panels, there's no reason to keep these around. Definitely uh, important to take take these down. Oh, and Commander built himself into a little bit of a conundrum here. I had to step out of the map for a second there to fix that. <laughs> Luckily, Commanders have a secret ability to clip into the, the, the pocket dimensions around them and, and step through multiple dimensions, multiple portals across the Commanderverse. Just went and saw that new uh, Spider-Man across the... Uh, across the multiverse movie and uh i had high expectations and they were still they were still out outgrown um yeah they, that was that was an artistic masterpiece i uh i i would i would go so far as to say jesus come on swim man take it easy mate i'm trying to trying to give unimportant unimportant information about uh 
<laughs> yes, we get it. Frosty16 is building a Hydra in the back line here. Swimman is incredibly excited. I, I do apologize for all that noise that they're making. Um, I cannot control what the players here do. I just hope everyone gets to enjoy uh, nice, peaceful games here and there. Before I can even finish my thought, Bear King has already been taken down by a collection of gunships here, and the pinging continues. Gosh, I need to figure out... Maybe someone can write me a widget and send it on over to me to uh, disable the uh, notifications from the, <laughs> from the spectator chat. It's incredibly annoying getting all those pings. It is bizarre that we are going for a capital ship, though. There's there's no reason, <laughs> except to uh, except to be hilarious, I suppose. You can't. I mean, you can't transport these. There's nothing. You can't do anything with this. But uh, having a capital ship in the pond is just like a hilarious misuse of resources. <sighs> Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Just to finish that thought and wrap it up before it uh, completely slips away from my mind. Absolutely going to be genre-defining for the, uh, the the animation, American animation. So uh, if you haven't seen it, it's worth your it's worth your money to go go check it out in theaters. Uh, riot tanks pushing forward here, as well as some medium tanks from both factions. We have stouts and oh oh I'm forgetting brutes. That's right. Stouts and brutes both teaming up here to try and push back the yellow commander, or rather the the pink commander. Colors are hard. Okay, take it easy on me. Uh, Cypress here getting pushed back. The red player is officially covering uh, about fifty percent of the front line at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we're doing we're doing about well all the middle of the map and then also the southern part of the map. But we also have units up north in case we need to protect the northern half of the map as well. A um, bunch of thugs coming out here to push forward, and they actually catch a bunch of Wolverine that are completely unmicroed here. That's really nicely done. Now the tanks do turn around and realize that they're being flanked. Uh, but these thugs are pretty good against these tanks. They're not microed exactly perfectly at the moment. Uh, but they're doing their, doing their best. They're putting in good work here. And at the end of the day, this push is repelled. At this point, Captain Fishcake is responsible for holding this choke point here. Let me draw a nice little line. Uh, responsible for holding this choke point, this choke point as well. Um, and his units are about half of the bulk holding this massive front. So all those white lines are what the red player is essentially holding on to. And so uh, you, you see there's a reason why these these uh, high true skill players get the color that they do. Only one chevron too, that's quite interesting. Now in the back line for the blue team, um, still way too many T1 solar panels and I will not stop griping about that. Despite many of people asking me to, I will continue to harp on people for this many solar panels. That's an extra 3,000 metal that could easily fund a T2 lab right here. We are overflowing an excessive amount of energy, uh, and uh, we, we need the metal to go up to T2. Now, this T2 metal extractor is going to be way more efficient than converting energy into uh, into metal here. And that's the reason. That's that, that that should be as good an example as I need to give for why you should always consider re-eating your T1, T1 solar panels. Be hesitant to build them in the first place. But if the wind is bad, and there are maps where the wind is just shaky, just always remember to eat them up in the end of the day. You're going to have a great time. We have a contingent of bombers here, and by a contingent, I guess I just mean a, a duo of bombers. Ready to uh, think about going on a run, I hope. Tons of tanks out here as well, as Red has so kindly highlighted. <laughs> uh, doing my job for me while playing the game. Showing us that uh, Captain Fishcake may be one to keep our eyes on in the future. Loads and loads of units marching around the map. Really impressive armies. Uh, at least as far as the T1 stage goes, and I, I don't see a whole lot of tech transitions. Oh, uh, we do finally have some T2 units hitting the field over here. A couple of Quakers, the artillery, the mobile artillery, and these are very powerful. Not quite as good as the Mauser from Armada, but they are the next best thing. I, there's not really a, a direct parallel, um, you know, before stepping around into other uh, bizarre realms here and there. Nice little tank formation, by the way. Big props to Rocket for getting a, a beautiful tank formation out and about. Oh, this is quite nice. We have a seaplane, uh, seaplane constructor here, eating up the corpse that was left behind on the battlefield. Yeah, and go and do go and do suck up all that metal and feed it back to our economy. That's very nicely done. I do appreciate that. White Chimp Ghost has become AFK here. Uh, yeah, actually, actually entirely AFK. 
We have no units coming out at the moment. We have uh, nothing going on with our commander. Oh, no, we are moving around. We're thinking about using some of our units, it, it would appear. Uh, we just haven't quite figured out how. But as soon as we do, they will be out and about on the field. I'm certain of it. Absolutely certain of it. We do have all these twilights on these, uh, these, these metal extractors here. And a surprising lack of aggression. I'm actually going to speed up here because uh, I, I, I want to know what happens. <laughs> we're, we're stepping pretty slowly into this T2 game here. I'm expecting some sort of aggression. Our red player, Captain Fishcake, is very hesitant to overextend, and I can understand why. When you essentially make up the bulk of the frontline defense here, um, it can be really scary to push in and overcommit, and then suddenly you've been jumped on by three other players, and, and you have no way to uh, to go back to defending, and in, in the team blames you for the defeat. <laughs> it's happened to me, it might happen to you, um, and certainly it's no fun. Sheldon here being quite dangerous, and they are suddenly showing their hand. Um, this is the first proper T2 engagement we've seen, and they get a commander. The first unit these Sheldons kill. I mean, I guess, I suppose they killed some of those buildings over there as well, but I, I mean a proper unit. Uh, yeah, and it's a commander, so that's quite nice. Gunships come out here, and there is very little anti-air. There's a couple of manticores that really quickly get burned down here. And the gunships are threatening enough on their own to push back the majority of that army. Meanwhile, up north, nothing interesting is happening. We're starting up a second flagship. I... Okay. One was funny. One was funny. Two is uh, a little bit... Uh, a little bit on the nose there. At least we're building an economy behind this. That's, uh, that's all I can say here. Um, is there any naval unit that would actually be helpful? Uh, no. No, the answer is no. <laughs> I mean, anti-nuke, I suppose, is, is arguably helpful. It is shielding a part of red ba Red's base and, so, and, well, yeah, most of Orange is here, although maybe a nuke on the edge, the very, very fringe edge here might uh, possibly still clip that base. But anyway, um, yeah, we were just goofing around in the water, having a having a fun time playing around in the in the ocean. Uh, okay, this is very nice. So White, White Chimp Ghost has decided to step into that T2 economy proper, which is very nice to see. Those, those T2 naval economies can be really, really nice. Um, a bit less impressive on a map like this, but a lot better when you have a huge open ocean and all the room in the world to spend, uh, spend, spend metal on building an economy. The purple tanks being an absolute menace here. He's a menace. I'm in a real Spider-Man mood, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of spiders, we have some recluses heading around the field. Oh, and an advanced geothermal plant just went up. Did the recluses rockets get an update? I don't remember them ever curving, but now suddenly they're curving all over the place. I mean, I like a curve as much as the next guy, but uh, I, I, I could have sworn that those used to just continue firing and then they ran out of fuel and they would crash into the ground. Hmm. Interesting. We'll have to go dig through some patch notes later. We do have a couple of these Arbiters slipping into my southern accent here for you folks. We have a couple of Arbiters holding the front lines here, going to start sieging this massive line of T1 thugs. And that is quite a conundrum. Now the Mammoths are out on the field, though. They don't really care about those Arbiter missiles. They don't care about much. They just shrug off basically all but the harshest of attacks. Anything from T3 or, um, you know, some of, that, some of that T2 defense, the Pulsars, the the bulwarks, all that sort of stuff. The mammoths move incredibly slowly, but moving at all is enough to keep you safe from arbiters. Um, and the mammoths have hit the field, and now with the artillery support behind them, uh, they will they will start to break the ranks. The armies clash. A huge trade of units at the moment. You can see these sumos being absolutely instrumental in tearing apart that army. Sumo versus mammoth. The mammoth will win it, but uh, it, it's it's a slow battle. <laughs> Both of these units incredibly tanky and not tremendously high DPS. Um, so certainly that is a uh, that's going to be a long fight. <laughs> Bunch of anti-air bots were paralyzed by EMP bombers, no less. So that is uh, quite ironic, but also very important as far as engagements go. And we can see almost eleven. Well, yeah, wow, eleven thousand metal left out on the field here. Uh, whoever can claim that metal, and we definitely have the presence in order to do it, is going to be at a tremendous advantage. Now I need to check. Yeah, okay, looks like the rest of the map is stalled out down here. Don't see anyone else moving in for any aggression, so looks like we can keep our eyes up here for at least the time being. 
Mammoth versus Mammoth at the moment. That's a, uh, that's a laser battle that's going to go on for about two and a half hours. Luckily, there's some there's these hounds over here willing to help out. Otherwise, we would be watching these mammoths duel each other with lasers for for solid millennia. <laughs> Whoa, nuclear bomber has come out. We're getting serious now, folks. Nuclear bomber is out and about, and I would love to see this target. Something absolutely critical like, oh, I don't know, right there in the middle of this entire base. <laughs> That'd be a huge target. You could just absolutely blow away the entire production facility for Ducky XD. Um, doing so would mean that that player is forced to rely on help from their teammate, who is streaming out mammoths at a pace, which is actually quite nice. Those are, those mammoths are extremely powerful for keeping a front line together. Ooh, but we decided to take out some T2 constructors instead. Um, I don't hate that, I suppose, but it was definitely not the, uh, the target I would have gone for. Maybe this huge grouping of units as well. Could definitely wipe away maybe half of these. All things considered, um, yeah, here we go. This is a better target. There is some anti-air here, though, so this will not survive at engagement. But a lot of those rocket spiders do end up going down, so that is always quite nice. Spybot here being the vision that these rocket bots need in order to fire their long-range salvos. And they are quite long-range. You can see these actually can fire really, really far out here. This push up north is continuing, uh, but we're kind of running out of steam. We really were relying on that massive wave of T1 units in the start in order to keep all this together. Uh, at this point, we are kind of just relying on the Sheldon here. Now, there are more mammoths pushing forward, so those might be enough to do some work. Uh, but you know what would work a whole lot better is just a lot of T1 spam. So grunts, uh, pawns, you know, whatever you can spare. Nuclear bomber going in. Uh, nuclear bomber going out. <laughs> nuclear bomber chickened out here, which is quite, quite interesting, because you'd think if you're going to use a nuclear bomber, you might as well make it worth it. Um, but it, it decides to turn around and, uh, and stop the aggression here. We've decided to stop producing these, uh, <laughs> these Black Hydra. Uh, actually contribute to the team. Whoa, going right up to a Juggernaut here. I guess I wasn't paying it much attention to the back lines. Purple has, has, uh, done a nice job economying up here. Economying? Teching up here. Let's go with that. Uh, building a beautiful economy. So despite the fact that these are just T1... Oh, no, I take it back. These are T2 units. We do have Zars. And bat or negotiators rather tigers um all a bunch of different good t2 units mixed in here uh, that's that's good to see we are actually producing decent units while also teching up here so we are contributing uh orange meanwhile in the the eastern side has just teched up tremendously i mean this is a hilarious amount of economy 14 advanced fusion reactors we have enough economy to certainly pull off a nostradamus maneuver if we wanted we could also do just about any other maneuver that we wanted um, that's that's a that's a game ending amount of economy and this first juggernaut is out on the field way before anyone else is thinking about T3. The closest possible candidate is going to be the purple player down here, but again, two advanced fusion reactors does not scale very well against 15 now. We're, we finished the 14th and we're starting our 15th. Uh, that being said, the juggernaut does not shoot air and there's a lot of dragons suddenly moving directly into Ducky XD's base. It doesn't take long for these dragons to completely dismember a base, dismantle it. Kind of just shooting around at whatever they can find here. I'd love to see them take down this T2 bot lab. They do get it. Fusion reactor stands with 3% health remaining. This one kind of losing its, uh, losing track of its thoughts here. Oh, we do finally take down that fusion. That's quite nice. EMP bomber brought out here. That's actually a really good idea. That's one way to push into these mammoths, certainly, is to EMP them. Uh, it's going to take quite a lot, though. They're very tanky units. Whoa, a nuke just came down right here. Didn't see that, sorry. But the a nuke just wiped away most of Red's forces, and suddenly the blue team has decided it's time to get aggressive. The Juggernaut is spotted up north. That is going to be needing to be dealt with. This is a bit of a T3 rush, though, so... Uh, if, if we want to deal with this Juggernaut, the only thing we need to do is not run our commander away. We need to cloak it and degun this Juggernaut. Uh, this, is a, this is a mistake we see newcomers to the game make quite a lot. Your degun, which is surprising no one, if you hit the D key on your keyboard, D is in dog, it pulls up this little menu, uh, and you can fire a gun called the degun. I think it's called that because it's, its name is the disintegrator gun. Oh yeah, just your disintegrator. Um, and it instantly kills anything in the game. So that, paired with your cloak ability, which is this vision toggle right here, 
allows you to instantly destroy any any uh, well anything in the game. Be it, be it command well not commanders anymore after the new update, but be it uh, you know T three units, be it be it buildings, be it whatever. Um, you're gonna you're gonna take them down immediately. So that's important to know. Just just uh, for your reference here, Spacebound would definitely be able to destroy that uh, destroy that that nasty juggernaut with very little effort with just a single D gun and a cloaked commander here. It's also very expensive to lose lose juggernauts that way because you you really are expecting to get as much value out of all that metal and energy you put in there. Um, it's one way to come back against a player that is is using or has has, has eco greeted as much as we have seen back here. Uh, and it's it's one way to come back against that sort of play is to just use your uh, your D gun. Nobody calling it out in the chat. Spacebound is just continuing to run away. Um, somebody else is going to have to go deal with that because I don't think Spacebound knows, and it looks like nobody's willing to tell them. Meanwhile, a bunch of these T2 tanks are continuing to push forward down here, just streaming against the flames of all these units that are that are constantly coming out of this T2 bot lab. Uh, they do eventually make it into the base, though. A T1 medium tank actually makes it in first. Oh, there's also some tanks from green that have swept through the southern side here, and they have actually completely ravaged the base back here. Suddenly, the southern side of this map is crumbling in the red player's hand. Hands, I should say. There's multiple people there. We're going to self-destruct this juggernaut. One nice thing is if we do manage to kill this, which we might... Ooh, it's going to be close. Ooh, we do manage to kill the Juggernaut as opposed to it self-destructing. So the reason that's important is because it leaves its body behind and you can resurrect it. A ton of res bots. And uh, you'll, you'll actually be able to put it back up on its feet and use it to your own extent. Otherwise, of course, you can always just reclaim all that juicy, juicy metal. 17,000 metal. More than this entire reclaim field right here. Nuke was stopped by an anti-nuke just there. And yeah, these players down south now suddenly have quite a, quite a bit of a mess to clean up here. <laughs> Juggernaut missiles accidentally doing more friendly fire than, uh, than than good here. We're also just eating up our player's base. That's kind of a, kind of a rude thing to do. Usually you want to try and resurrect your teammates' bases and help them out as much as you can. Oh, we do actually stop the resbots. That's quite nice. Okay, so we are we are aware of what we're doing down here. That's good. Yeah, I'd love to see uh, all this stuff resurrected and put back into these players' hands. It's one way to help your team get a uh, upper hand when all hope looks lost here. Now, if all of this force is concentrated directly against the uh, the back line here, I think we might have enough to do quite a lot of damage. Um, however, it's not, and so all of it is sort of dispersed all over the place, and for the time being, there's uh, there's juggernauts roaming the map. We have one in the middle of the map and one down south here. See the orange juggernauts stomping forward. That's kind of a cool scene right there. Hold on, let me take a, take a closer look at this. You can see the seaplane bats. They're all following the uh, the juggernaut here, swarming around it like a pack of crows ready to feast on whatever this juggernaut kills. <laughs> wow, what a what a really cool scene. Anyway, should probably get back to the match so we don't miss anything too important here. Uh, the Black Hydras come into play. Do we eat one of them? Oh no, there's just two of them touching each other right there. Um. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Seaplanes are trying their very best. Oh, those bombs, they're so satisfying. <laughs> they all just drop in such a such a tight little cluster that it just it is absolutely the most satisfying bomber in the entire game. I do love the Cortex seaplane bombers. At this point we find that there are tons of juggernauts out and about here. Um, a ridiculous amount of juggernauts. We're going to see we're going to need to see these degunned if we want any chance of dealing with this. This one is getting way too close to the base here. Um, do we have a commander moving? We, we don't have any commanders moving in for the D-gun on this. At least not at the moment. So, uh, Green's base is toast. Yeah, if we're not going to D-gun that Juggernaut, then Green's base is toast. We've also got a Juggernaut over here that we're just swarming with T1 medium tanks. When it steps, it does a little bit of damage, but it's hard to see. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see, whenever, whenever a tank moves underneath it, it takes a little bit of damage. I think it's called like Krog Stomp or something. Krog Crush. <laughs> yeah, whenever it, whenever it takes a step, it does a little bit of damage beneath it, which is pretty funny. Yeah, Green's base has been completely ravaged by this uh, by 
<laughs> by this juggernaut that nobody has decided to degun. It's really unfortunate. This this 100% could have been prevented here, especially considering we already had the commander sitting right there. <clears throat> At this point, things are looking really bad for the blue team, as now this juggernaut has pushed really far in. A bunch of bombers have devastated a lot of the uh, white chimp ghost players, or I guess you should say white chimp ghost, the, the uh, aquamarine blue player here. All of their production is now ravaged. And this juggernaut is stepping its dirty toes into the water. Yeah, I'd love to see this commander degun it. You cannot degun from inside the water. <laughs> we had our chance to degun, and uh, we we missed it pretty pretty badly. There are some fiends moving around up here. Loads of anti-air, but no actual units. And uh, the, this player is pinging to their heart's content about these units moving around over here, but there's not actually a way for them to deal with it. These fiends getting a complete walk-by. Very nice. Very well done by the green player having the presence of mind to uh, to do that, to remember to continue to harass while still being uh, devastated in their front line. Oh, cannot EMP juggernauts. Wish you could, but you cannot. This one will probably get itself destruct off, and there it goes. Absolutely nuking everything around this area. White Chimp Ghost left with a few underwater fusion reactors to their name and very little else. Ooh. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nuclear bombers coming in here. 78 down to 65. Somebody can do the quick mass on that, but uh, it is not enough to stop it. Bunch of these dam busters. Is that what these are called? Yeah, the dam busters moving in here. And they're going straight for the advanced fusion reactor back here. Uh, is this enough dam busters? I actually have no idea. Oh, whoa, oh. Uh, uh, not sure what just went wrong there. Looked like they had it. Looked like they could do it. Oh, there we go. And the green base goes up in smoke. That is all of SS9's base completely wiped away there by a single fusion reactor. We just got T3 unit production up and running too. And uh, just to be just to be torn down at the last moment by a bunch of damn busters. Those damn busters. Now some dragons are out. And they are fling right into the hands of a million archangels. How many do we have on the ground here? 15 archangels and they're going to start tearing down these uh, dragons. Although, pretty slowly I do have to say, the dragons are actually able to outpace the archangels. Man. I hate the dragon. <laughs> Unit is so tough to deal with. What do these cost? 5,100 metal. I mean, I guess for that much metal, it's got to be pretty survivable, but... Jeez. I mean, look at this anti-air. It just, it, it's just nothing. Dragonaut fight down here. That's pretty epic. Feel bad for these, uh, these res bots that are just walking by as these juggernauts go at it. Pretty cool. Juggernaut down here did kill another Juggernaut over there. Zars are, ooh, ooh, getting some really nice hits in. Wiping away T1 bots like it's nothing. But we do have Karganath continuing to push in as well. I didn't check in on that Fiend push, but it does look like those Fiends were able to take down the Fusion Reactor here for Ducky XD. Oh, the second Juggernaut actually finished out of just the T3 lab here. That's quite interesting. Wouldn't have seen that coming. But it does finish. This Juggernaut is retreating quickly. Trying its very best to get on out of there. Go on, get. Suddenly this is looking really bad for the blue team. Who is now on the back foot here. Massive economic lead by the uh, orange player. And by proxy, basically the entire red team. The Again, the closest tech lead is going to be... Or the, the closest tech player, I guess I should say, is going to be Rocket down here. It has two T3 gantries, but not enough build power to build out of either one of them. <laughs> I think I would probably like to see more build power before we go for another T3 gantry over here. SS99 doing a great job, actually, degunning a Juggernaut over here. I probably would have liked to see that a little sooner, but still, that's the first commander we've seen degun a Juggernaut. So I, I, I still got to give you props, SS9, SS99. Uh, good job on getting that done, because uh, otherwise that Juggernaut would have absolutely just ran past and blown up the rest of your team's tech. Tons of these dam busters continuing to be an absolute menace back here. 
probably confused about where the tech is. They sort of expected it to be in the same position as their tech player, uh, but they found very, very little. Ah, these ones did find the tech over here. Oh, was this one gonna attack? Oh, it had the chance. It could have absolutely ravaged the purple player's base if it had just attacked, but it did not, and so luckily, the purple player is spared. Uh, this this looks like we're trying to uh, take care of that, though. That is a lot of anti-air that we have, though. Anti-air is pretty good. Yep, that anti-air will easily take care of those damn busters. Not a single one will pass through. You shall not pass. <laughs> exactly. Shall not pass, will not pass, does not pass. Uh, meanwhile, juggernauts are destroying the entire North Africa. We have, we have as many Juggernauts, we're using Juggernauts like they're grunts here. <laughs> Just walking them around wherever we feel like it. Uh, and yeah, there's there's not a whole lot we can do about this. I mean, get the commander out there and start degunning. It's really your only option here, but we are, we are capable of producing so many Juggernauts at a time uh, without some sort of strategic strike. This is going to easily crush the entire blue team here. Quite a drawing we've got down here. The red, the red player. Drawing little loop-de-loops to highlight the Juggernaut, the lone Juggernaut pushing towards his base. Uh, he has the Commander. The Commander has the Disintegrator. The Disintegrator has the Cloak Field built into it. And uh, all the all the tools at our disposal are, well, at our disposal. We just aren't using them. Something just exploded, I didn't see what. Big explosion over here, by the way. Um, yeah, why aren't we degunning this? Why are we running away? No! Oh, no. Well, um, I guess Red has decided to forfeit from the match. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. We are not running away. We are standing our ground. It won't matter, though. This Juggernaut is being blasted down by all sorts of different utility here, and it will go down. We could have we could have spared so much army and so much time by just disintegrating that uh, juggernaut, but then I guess you can't resurrect it. So uh, there's that. Yeah, the uh, juggernauts are marching forward on the southern side. Ooh, purple potion does disintegrate one of the juggernauts. Oh, only to be sniped by two more that are pushing in behind it. Cut down one of my juggernauts. I will rebuild with two more in its place. The juggernaut hydra. Uh, yeah, we're looking pretty, we're looking pretty dire at the moment. The blue team, that is. Orange has done a phenomenal job of picking up and carrying this team on their back. Uh, as many juggernauts as possible swarming around the map. I mean, you can see just how many of these there are now. Uh, 20 juggernauts out and about on the field. And there's absolutely no response from the blue team. Purple has done a decent enough job teching up for themselves, but one man cannot stand against this much oppression. Blue is effectively rendered out of this game. We can see an advanced fusion reactor so close to coming up here. Uh, but we have, uh, we have our sliders turned all the way down, so we are not going to be finishing that advanced fusion reactor anytime soon. This is only a matter of time before these juggernauts sweep through here. I'm going to turn up the speed so that we can get to that part quicker. <laughs> we do have two purple juggernauts out and about now. If we can get in front and behind a Juggernaut and get full advantage of the, uh, the the flanking bonus, then Juggernauts can kill other Juggernauts, but they're not going to be able to kill... How many is that there? Ten, ten Juggernauts? <laughs> There's just no way. The economies have already outgrown the purple player, and so this is their bold last stand. Behemoth doing its best to cut down this Juggernaut. Does about, what is that, 8% damage? Yeah, 8% damage per uh, per shot. The Dam Busters are out now. And there goes all of the Purple Player's economy. All the energy production. And there goes the Fusion Reactor. The last uh, the last commander cloaking and running. Okay, let's, uh, let's get to the end here. That is going to be the end for the blue team. At this point, we just have the final commander running around, trying to degun whatever we can. Commander goes down. And that is the red team taking the victory. The orange player, really, <laughs> snatching victory uh, for their team. The blue team definitely had so many opportunities here. But fortunately, or unfortunately for them, I guess I should say, 
the, uh, the, the orange player was able to build a massive economy in the back here, unhindered by any sort of bombing or harassment. And uh, yeah, basically won every award. And for that, I have to give them a huge commendation. Thanks to Dead for watching. This was a super exciting game. I love this map. Always excited to cast it. If you have any replays you'd like to submit, by the way, you can always submit those to Brightworks Replays at gmail.com. And uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to take a look at them. I always love to hear from you guys and love to see what shenanigans you're getting up to here. Just uh, take it easy on me because sometimes I, I get quite a lot of them all at once. <laughs> and then suddenly I have hours and hours of, of replays to filter through. Uh, anyways, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching with me. And uh, I will see you in the next video.